In this video, I'm gonna give you my review of the Selenko Whiteout 305. Now, the big thing about Selenko is that they've been around for a while, but they've never really made rackets before. You probably know them more so by their string, some of their two most popular being Selenko Torbite, as well as the green string everyone knows, Selenko Hyper-G. You pretty much see this string everywhere, and if you ever see a green string in a racket, it's most likely that one. But the thing about Selenko rackets is that Selenko took all their time that they had spent developing string, they took all of that power after they had perfected those, and then they moved on to rackets. It took them quite a while, but they came out with two rackets, one being the whiteout, one being the blackout. Now the whiteout here, this is pretty much a blade with extra features. Now what those extra features are is A, there is foam, inside the actual racket itself, which we'll talk about a little bit later and what that does, as well as you have these two butt caps. Now, these may seem in insignificant. You're like, why do you have those? But the thing is, Selenko made it to where you can put these butt caps inside of your whiteout and you can add either five grams or 10 grams of weight into the butt cap without having to put lead it on the bottom of your handle without having to fill it with foam. So it's just a little bit of an easier thing to use if you're wanting to customize your racket. And that's why I say it's a blade with a little bit of extra features. Wilson doesn't have anything like this. Selenko's one of the first ones I know that has something that I'll say that is relatively recent to do this. So it's an interesting thing to note. Now, the other reason I say that it's a blade with extra features I kind of explained the extra features, but the reason why it's a blade is because A, you have a 98 head size, which is pretty much just going to give you a very standard control oriented racket setup for today's modern game. 98 being the more control oriented, 100 being the more power and spin focused option, as well as a 16 by 19 string pattern. The 16 by 19 string pattern helping to give a little bit more control not control, spin and power coming off of the string bed because of the more open string pattern. It allows the ball to launch a little bit higher and just get a little bit more elevation as you are hitting with it um, in almost any single string that you are going to be using. So again, same thing as the blade, same thing as the blade. The weight, not very much any different. You have unstrung about 10.8 ounces and 305 grams unstrung and then you have about 11.4 ounces to about 320 or 323 grams strung. So pretty much very, very, very similar setup to an entire blade or most of, and now granted when I say blade, just so that way it's a little bit easier to know, I'm talking about the Wilson Blade 9816 by 19, the standard version of the Wilson Blade. This is the standard version of the wideout, so they are pretty comparable. That was one of the very first things that I noticed as soon as I got this racket out, just to A, see it, and B, to play with it. It's a very similar play style, very similar, very similar power level, very similar feel. It's, it's essentially a blade, but it's Selenko's version. There are a few little bit of key differences. Now, one of those differences is the stiffness rating that I've typically been seeing for this. And I think this was what mine was at as well, was that it was a 66 stiffness. Now what a 66 stiffness means is that this racket does tend to be a little bit harder on the arm for most players, especially, especially if you're comparing it to other rack, especially if you do compare it to some other rackets. Now, if, if you're obviously, if you're comparing it to say a Babolat Pure Drive, that's not a fair comparison because a Babolat Pure Drive is very stiff. It is one of the stiffest rackets and it has a different construction to it. But if you're looking at other control rackets, this one, it seems to be around the around what most of them are. However, it is going to be, in my opinion, just a little bit more on the stiffer side. But the thing is, you don't really feel it that much in the whiteout for one specific reason that I mentioned earlier. Uh, see, I tied it back in. It's that foam that's in the actual whiteout itself. So. Since the whiteout has foam inside the actual racket itself, that's helping to dampen the vibration and the shock before it gets back into your wrist, before it gets back into your arm, or just gets back to you. So that way it has a less chance of causing tennis elbow. 
it is something that you do notice, but this foam does make the racket feel a little bit more muted while you do play. So if you like a more connected feeling to the ball and the string, the wide out may not necessarily be the frame to go with unless you're using a very shaped string or a string that has a lot of feel to it because that will then help kind of counteract the foam as well as keeping it easy on your arm while it is in the frame. Now, I'm not saying this is a go ahead to just put in any single string you want in there, such as like Black Dunlop Black Widow at 60 pounds or even Selenko Hypergy at 58. Be smart about it. If you have arm issues, you may want to stay away from polyesters, even in a racket that is going to be a little bit more helpful for you. We don't want you getting hurt. We don't want you dealing with arm issues. We don't want you dealing with any of that. So just be sure, play it safe. Don't go too overboard. Definitely demo the racket if you have the chance. Make sure it actually works for your game style. If you're coming completely cold turkey into this racket and you've never used it before, you've never used something like it, then you just try and do something completely different. Don't do that. If you, because once you pay for it, you're kind of stuck with it if you use it. So be careful. Now, as you can probably guess from me talking about it being such a big comparison to the Wilson Blade, you essentially have a control racket. That's the type of racket this is. And then the other thing where this, where this racket tends to differ from most other control rackets is going to be the price. You're looking at about 219 brand new. Now, to some of you who may have not been looking at the prices of rackets recently, you're like, 219? What? What? Now, for others who have been trying to buy a brand new racket, you look at 219, you're like, that's it? Exactly. This racket, especially from Selenko, just like their strings, they're not the highest priced rackets or the highest priced strings that are around, but they are of a very great quality. And that is something to note about Selenko. They are not trying to be the most expensive brand because they're just trying to make the best quality product and have the most access for people to get into. Well, and that's why they make their products as they are. Sometimes it does very it does very well as we can see with their strings, especially Slinko Hypergy, because like I said, this thing is everywhere. Whether you look at high school level, college level, up, I'll say I won't say necessarily up to the professional level. You don't usually see Hypergy as much up there. There are a few other strings that take over once you get to that level, but club level, high school, college, intermediate, that Hypergy is everywhere. It's very affordably priced just like the racket is compared to other control rackets in the same line, as well as just being a very nice all around style of racket, even though it's a little bit more focused on control and the string being more spin, spin friendly with today's modern game. It's just a very nice combination that Selenko found out and had tested for years before they finally were able to get it right. Now, finally, we have the compare twos here. Obviously, the number one easy one, as I've been saying, will send Blade 9816 by 19. But we're not going to do that one. We're going to do the Pure Strike from Bablat. And that is also going to be the 16 by 19. That's going to be a little bit more of a power version of the, of the control racket just because it is a Bablat string. Also, in my opinion, a little bit harder, even though it does tend to be a little bit lower on the stiffness ratings. But it is definitely something to note. And then if you want to put it right here, then you could do the Radical MP from Head. I uh, will make the line a little longer. The Radical MP, it's going to be very similar. I've talked about the Radical MP on this channel here before, especially when comparing it to the Wilson Blade. So it is something to note that the wide eye will be very similar to it and just be something to also try against if you're considering either switching to the wideout or just trying it out for the first time. Now on court, the wideout, it, like I kind of mentioned a little bit earlier when I was talking about it, it's a very good all around all court racket. I personally felt that it had just a little bit more power to it than the traditional Wilson Blade V9 98 16 by 19 that is out currently. Now it, the blade I'll say was just a little bit easier on the arm, just had to me a little bit more flex to it, but the wideout, because it was a little bit stiffer and has that foam inside of it, it's not going to be extremely harsh on the arm. It's going to be very nice, very plush feeling. Again, you just have a little bit of a muted feel. So it is going to be something to where if you're not used to it, you will have to get used to. But 
you can customize this racket in almost any single way you want to make it and it is arguably going to work whether you get the attachable butt caps now those do cost a little bit extra they do they do not come with the racket but if you get those you can have a little bit easier time to customize as well as you can always do the traditional adding lead to the frame wherever you want and then the combination of the actual foam in the handle and the rest of the racket makeup just makes for a very pleasant all-around play test play experience and it would and especially for the price is not necessarily going to be the worst thing in the world to go to if you are wanting to potentially switch rackets or just get a control racket that is going to have a very similar play style to the Wilson Blade, but you just want something a little bit different. So, with that being said, if you like the video, leave a like on it, comment down below any questions you have about this Slinko Whiteout 305, or if you've got to play with it, what were your thoughts? I'd love to know what you were thinking about this racket if you've gotten to try it, as well as subscribe to the channel so that we can grow this channel. Get the information out there from the people that have it to the people that need it. There's a lot of tennis misinformation in the tennis community. So I took it upon myself to make this channel so that we can just get rid of that and actually have a conversation so that so that way we can get all this information to the correct people, like I kind of mentioned a little earlier. And we don't have to worry about our gear causing us problems like tennis elbow or anything else like that. So with that being said, as always, take care.